righty. Let's see. Um, so we have um, a dog who just arrived um, yesterday who's a little bit nervous. Let me make sure I have her name correct. Her name is Coco. Makes sense. She's, well, I guess it kind of does. She's black and white. Um, so we have Coco here. And she came yesterday. She's doing an advanced obedience board and train. And she's, I can tell she's just really nervous about being here. Some dogs, they um, are super people friendly and they open up in the first day or two. They're ready to see you and, and get to work. But some dogs, you got to really give them time. So if you're doing a board and train with us and we need some extra time with your dog, typically the only reason we need extra time is because your dog spent a week or a week and a half really not wanting to interact with us. because That makes it take a lot, uh, take a lot longer. So this is Coco here. Um, and I think it's a good example to show kind of how you need to treat a dog who um, isn't really comfortable with you. Um, you might learn a little something. So I'm gonna let Coco out and I'm gonna go over some of the things that I do to keep myself safe and keep her comfortable. So I'm gonna stand in front of the crate at first, but I'm not gonna make her wait very long. Free. I'm gonna say my cue for her to come out and then I'm gonna allow her out. And as you can see, look at her, kind of taking off, staring behind her constantly, looking back, and then she's gonna go check and see if she can probably go into the house and find an escape route um, because she's like, well, where are my people at? Who are you? I don't wanna be here. So we're gonna go grab her because she's actually not allowed in the house. Um, she doesn't know that yet. You know, see, I know these, I know these dogs. Look, she's in the house. She doesn't really know that yet. No, no, come. So I'm not going to correct her or anything. I mean, I verbally corrected her, but I'm not going to physically correct her or anything. I'm just going to move her back into the, into the common area to the backyard here. And then I'm going to drop the lead again and I'll move a chair. Dogs that aren't confident a lot of times, if you put an object in front of them, that's enough to really deter them from wanting to do whatever they were gonna do. So if they wanna go into the house, you put an object in front, and they'll be like, well, I don't know what that weird object is, so I'm not gonna go in. So she's just staring at the gate here, um, probably wondering where her mom and dad are, and she doesn't wanna train. So this, this type of behavior isn't productive. Um, there's no point in me forcing her to do anything. It's just gonna take time for her to get comfortable enough um, to want to interact with me um, and to want to learn and, and do different things. So um, typically this happens to dogs who are already at maturity. So she's, a, I think she's five. So she's already a adult. Um, that's 35. And if you translate the, the age, so she's 35 years old, technically. Um, oh, she's going pee. That's good. Um, so she's just already mature. She's already used to certain habits and routines and I've completely flipped her world upside down because I've, I've changed the habits, I've changed the routine and she doesn't even know me. Um, but going back to the topic of like a nervous um, dog, you can tell she's uncomfortable. So I'm gonna show you kind of what I did to, to make our interactions as pleasant as possible for the time being. So as you can see, um, she's got her paw up. That's another sign of discomfort. Um, so I have a super long lead on her. And the reason I have a long lead on her is because I want to be able to get her easily, but I want to be able to get her without kind of being super overbearing. So with the lead, I can come up and, and approach her in a non-threatening way because she might see me as kind of threatening just because she doesn't know me. Um, but a lot of dogs think males are more threatening anyways. So grabbing the lead, um, from 16 feet away or 15 feet away, whatever, whatever length this lead is. Um, and then showing her where I'd like her to go without being so, so, um, overbearing and standing over her and pressuring her into feeling like she might be unsafe because I don't want her to feel unsafe at all. Um, another thing I'm doing is I have a choke chain on her. Um, choke chains are good for dogs who might have, um, a nipping or biting issue just because if you get bit or nipped, if you use a choke chain, you can easily um, apply pressure to it and, and cut off the airway. 
to where the dog is not going to be able to continue biting you. So you can gain control of the situation um, really quick. So if you have a nervous dog, let's say you pick up a dog from a shelter um, and the dog doesn't know you, um, I would recommend you putting your putting your newly acquired dog who's nervous um, on a long leash and respecting their space. So you notice I'm not coming up to her and making her interact with me. She'll come up to me when she's comfortable. And when she comes up to me, I can provide value for her. So I can say, okay, I appreciate you coming up to me. Uh, if you want me to pet you, then I can check and see if she wants me to, to pet her. Or I can just add add food to the to the equation. And a lot of times um, the dogs are willing to interact if you have a treat or you have food. Um, so the key to having a dog who, who doesn't really like you is not to force them to like you and come into their space and pet them and rub them. The key is to actually pretty much ignore them um, and let them do what they're comfortable doing. Um, and then over time, they'll start coming up to you and interacting with you because you're all they have. I mean, if it's just you and you and them, I mean, they're going to need you before you're going to need them in a sense. So eventually they're going to want some food. Eventually they're going to want some attention. And then once they do that, you can reinforce that and reward it and show them that they're safe um, with you. So um, I'm not going to ask her to do anything obedience wise. We'll just let her pee and poop and then I'll put her back up. Another thing that's important is not to give her a whole bunch of food from the bowl, right? Or really any food from the bowl, because right now I need her in a state of mind where she wants to get to know me. And if I have um, if I have food that she wants, it's going to be quicker in terms of her wanting to get to know me because she'll want to interact with me for her own needs. I mean, she needs food. So I won't give her any food today or tomorrow. Um, and then I'll offer her food from my hand um, in the near future. And then once she takes the food, um, that'll start building some rapport and a habit here. Um, so this is Coco. And y'all can stay tuned to see how she gets a little bit more comfortable during her training.